the matter of the guardianship of Jaden Allen Think Scales, G20053991M. I'm Judge Linda Marquis. Also joining us is Mr. Hoffland. Mr. Hoffland, your appearance for the record. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, my bar number, this is Brad Hoffland. My bar number is 6343, and I represent Ting Ho. And along with me is Jaden Think Scale. And along with me as well is. Uh, Associate from my firm, Dana, Dana de Sosa Cabral, and her bar number is 15063. 032. I'm sorry, 15032. Thank you, Counsel. Mr. Zernick. Thank you, Your Honor. Gary Zernick, my bar number is 7963. I'm appearing in an unbundled capacity for this hearing only uh, for Kaylee Hollenbaugh. Um, and for the record, she is sitting here in my office with me, and she could, <clears throat> if you want uh, her to make an appearance. Um, and her father, Mark Grimaldi, is also in my office. Uh, I do not represent him. He came along with her, and he is uh, sitting in the conference room in a separate room. Um, Kaylee and myself are, are uh, separated from, uh, uh, from him. I believe with him is his wife. Uh, she is uh, not on the record herself in, in video camera, but she's sitting in there with him. Thank you so much, counsel. I reviewed all the documents in this case. It's related to D2610868C. That's a custody case that's been temporarily reassigned to me. Um, counsel, I anticipate, um, so that you're aware, when we do a massive reassignment in January, the first weekend in January, that domestic case will be reassigned away from me and randomly reassigned um, to another judge. I wanted to make sure that you understood that. I didn't want to mislead you um, today, but that's my anticipation of the... Uh, reassignment that's coming um, that first weekend in January. I note when I look through um, the documents that proof of service is sufficient, the consent of um, natural father and paternal grandmother is sufficient, health and human services, the confidential identifiers have also been filed. There's um, two other linked cases, counsel, a J case um, and a D case. Counsel, are you aware of the J case? Are you talking to, to me, Your Honor? Yes. Um, I am aware of a closed J case from uh, back in 2016 or 17. It closed, I think, with a 550 plan. I have not been able to see those documents. Um, my client has prepared all of the, the, the documents on her own in this case and just hired me for the appearance. I did see a some form of a case summary uh, that she had. I believe she also filed it. Um, is that the case that you're referencing that one, or are you referencing yes, some new, new Yes. My, my question was, because you were unbundled and, and here today, I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of that case, and I wanted to know the extent to which you reviewed the, those documents or if you had any access to those. I did not have access to those. I just reviewed that, that sort of a case summary uh, right. in that part. Thank you so much. It looks like there was objections, um, several objections filed. Um, counsel, you filed a response um, to the objection and another um, response. I've reviewed all of those things today. I'm inclined to set this for evidentiary hearing um, unless there's anything else that anyone um, wants to say today. Um, in reference, I, I think it's a complicated issue um, because of um, mom's current um, CPS case and the results of that case, and also because the petitioner um, has a non-biologic relationship, but that natural father has nominated the petitioner. Um, it, it's, it's rather layered and would require um, significant findings from me. Before I could rule. I don't think that that's possible at the citation hearing, um, that I would have to take um, further testimony. I'd also, also in, in the objection, um, mom indicates that she was sent home by Niagara County CPS at birth. I would also um, like to request those CPS records. Mr. Hoffman? Uh, Your Honor, um, the in the scheduling of the uh, evidentiary hearing, um, between now and then, uh, my client's requesting that there's a temporary guardianship. She has a, a six-month guardianship that's set to expire. Uh, when is just... it set? Sure. When is it set to expire, Mr. Hoffman? 
December after, the twentieth. No, after Christmas. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. December, um, sorry, December 29th. All right, thank you, um, Mr. Zernich. Yes, Your Honor, I, I, I wanted to address I, uh, the the interplay between the custody case and this guardianship case. I'm. I think we're dealing with different standards uh, in both of the cases, and even if the, if the guardianship case goes forward, we know it could be a term terminated when it's no longer needed, and should that ever happen, then they're right back in the same position that that is so legal and so physical custody, and I'm wondering if they, it should all be consolidated into one case, into the, into the custody case. No, thank you, Mr. Zernich. So I'll tell you that I anticipate, <laughs> I, and I, under I understand your concerns. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think that there's much of an interplay. I'll tell you this, that I'm going to get ready to set this hearing um, on this guardianship really quickly. Um, guardianship matters um, are designed to function pretty quickly. Um, under the domestic case, uh, you're entitled to much more discovery and mandatory disclosures than you are entitled to in the guardianship case. The issues um, presented in the guardianship case, the legal issues, are issues of priority and preference under the statute, right? Mm -hmm. So um, because we have this interplay between somebody who has so legal and so physical nominating a guardian, um, however, we have a non-biologic person coming in and asking for guardianship, certainly um, someone else might have some preference as the statute lays out those preferences. It just requires, I can't make the decision today, that's why I have to set up for evidentiary hearing. We have too many people and too many objections for me to hear testimony from everyone um, that's sufficient to make the findings that I need to make today. If this was a simpler case and would take five minutes of testimony, I could do that. Um, but I'm telling you, I can't do it. I'm gonna set this evidentiary hearing probably at the beginning of March. There's a request for a temporary order. I understand that the custody case will go forward and should anybody's rights change, before the guardianship matter, um, that trial takes place, then I would consider that at that trial. However, just as you said, the standard in the custody case is much different than the standards in the guardianship case. They're, they're very divergent. Um, and, and so our, our chief, uh, I anticipated an administrative order from her um, in the next two weeks that eliminates guardianship cases from one judge, one family treatment and I will no longer be assigned any um, custody or uh, domestic cases. Um, it would also, the nature of the guardianship cases, that they're so complicated um, and require um, so much uh, attention to detail, um, are best suited to be heard by separate judges. So those weren't my decisions, but somebody else's. So I, I can't give you, I, I don't want to wait on making a decision on the guardianship case for the 120 days that's necessary for you to do the discovery in the custody case, quite frankly. I, I, okay, I, I get that and I understand that. I, I get, and I think maybe you answered one of my concerns. So even with the guardianship case proceeding, that's not going to hinder the, the, the process also of the custody case. They, in other words, I'm afraid the custody judge then might say, well, we're not doing anything until the guardianship case is done. Um, Certainly there, may, so certainly there might be an argument by somebody in the custody case that the judge cannot determine custody because there is a guardianship, right? And for mm -hmm. a custody case, you couldn't make an order that when the guardianship terminates, then this is going to be the custody order based on facts and circumstances that exist right now. So you can't make an order for the future in custody cases yeah. for facts and circumstances that exist at the time of the evidentiary hearing. So I would anticipate that a judge, perhaps in the custody action, could say, you know, there's a guardianship case pending. Until that case is terminated, I'm not going to even look at custody. Right. Uh, uh, okay. okay. Could happen. Right. It certainly could happen, but, you know, perhaps you and, and counsel uh, for a natural father would argue something differently and ask the court to proceed. What about the 15th and 20th? Yeah. Um, Your Honor, while the custody case is still with you, um, is there a possibility for us to take some care of some procedural things? Uh, I'll just give you a quick example. Um, the Ting, uh, Ms. Ho filed a motion to intervene in that case. My client opposed it, but I think my, my advice is for her to uh, withdraw that opposition 
Um, I think that she had no legal counsel, and I don't see any any basis uh, that that she's not going to be allowed to intervene in that case. Can we take care of that stuff here and now, or should we j just wait for the, that hearing and do it and do it uh, outside of this uh, hearing? So, counsel, I, because it's not on calendar today, I'm not going to address anything in that custody case today because it's not on okay. calendar. Mr. Hoplin, I don't even if you agree, I think. Um, reasons of notice that it would be inappropriate for me to, to, to deal with those things now. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I wasn't prepared to, to discuss that today. Right. I, we, I, we were just going to not oppose it, but I guess I could advise her uh, what to do after the fact. Um, is there a possibility to set, get an order to send my uh, client for a drug test and maybe alleviate certain concerns the court might have it, uh, for, for the possibility of some temporary orders between now and March so that we could have some visitation Maybe that are that are not at the discretion uh, of um, uh, of uh, Rex, who's given that discretion over to uh, Ms. Ho. Okay, so uh, so a few things. So uh, I, I'm going to go ahead then and, and set our evidentiary hearing for a half day in um, March. We'll get that date in a moment. Um, Mr. Hoffman made a request um, for a temporary guardianship. Mr. Zernit, is that? Are you have no objection to the temporary request? Um, with the visitation order? Um, that, that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to unmute myself for a second and just address the issue with my client. And it can be a risk prior to yeah. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, regardless of, uh, of whether my client is happy with that order one way or another, or what her objective was today, um, we, we think going forward um, a temporary order uh, would be sufficient. We're just hoping that we could get some visitation, uh, whether it's if it's supervised, perhaps supervised outside uh, at Donna's house or maybe with the grandparents, uh, with Mr. Grimaldi, um, and, and or and or his wife something more than something more than one hour at a time my clients finding it very difficult to bond uh, with the child on, on a one-hour visit every two weeks you know there's much about much about her petition and this and, and what they found that 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 we find uh, that she disputes but where I know we're not in to get into that today uh, for a purpose of temporary order but uh, from that standpoint we're, we're hoping to have something a little more along the lines of weekly visitation uh, you know, four, five, six hours at a time, eight hours at, at a time. Um, so that would be our our request, Your Honor. Different supervisors. Hoffman, Mr. Hoffman. Thank you, Your Honor. Before we get into that, I have one question. That the the records from uh, Niagara uh, County. Those documents. Is the court going to be requesting those documents, or, or does counsel need to re uh, seek those records? I'm going to request the documents. Um, they'll be provided in camera to me. Um, my experience with other jurisdictions is sometimes they're redacted, sometimes they're not. I, I, if And the other issue is sometimes uh, that jurisdiction does not allow disclosure to counsel. So should that, uh, the rules in that particular state allow disclosure to counsel and um, that they are redacted or that I can redact them, um, I will make provide them and make them available to counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. And the same with the J case records. We'll be able to review those in camera as well, Judge. Counsel, or, yes. So I'll issue my procedure is I'll issue a protective order, um, counsel, and those will be emailed to you in advance. But thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, I just refer yeah. back to what the uh, J case order uh, after the the plan was put together and after it's finished and completed is that any visitation. Um, with Kaylee is to be supervised. And it was put in there for protection of, of Jaden. If the court recalls through our papers, there was an issue regarding Jaden um, after Rex became involved in Jaden's life. And during that period of time, and since that period of time, Jaden has excelled, and Jaden's excelled to the point where as before, his contact was limited to living in a fifth wheel and that he was not 
out of that environment for a period of time, which is requiring them right now in which to have occupational therapy. People think of occupational therapy as somebody trying to get retrained for work, and the occupational therapy that Jaden goes to now is, uh, is for space recommendation and cognizance and understanding of his environment. He does not have the ability <clears throat> to have control over his arms, his hands, his legs, and knows where he's at. So if you go to a restaurant, for example, he does not understand what his hands and his legs are going to do. When he does certain activities, he doesn't understand that. He's been in an environment now where he's been protected in the sense that he's been able to become adaptive. And becoming adaptive is not only in that sense, but also in his education. Now he's receiving straight A's. The only reason I'm bringing this up is that over the last two years, the contact that there's been, which has been documented, is that there's been contact on 16 different occasions. Kaylee has seen Jaden on 16 separate occasions. And during that period of time, there's been issues as to her conduct and her father's conduct during those occasions. During the period of time before when Mark, uh, her father, had temporary guardianship before my client's uh, uh, former uh, uh, boyfriend uh, was brought into the picture, Haley actually called the police two times on her father. There's been other things which has occurred during the time, during these 16 visits in the last couple of years. And those yeah. things which have occurred is that Haley has given and stolen a gift and given it to Jaden during the time that she's been around uh, Jaden. So we just request that what's in place right now remains in place. The visitation, there has been an issue regarding the protection of the minor child. And that's what we're seeking in the guardianship. But the minor child's in a good position right now. And there's no reason to disrupt that and for the, the child to regress in a temporary matter. We can hear all these issues and the court can make a final determination in March. But there's no reason in which to modify or change around with the current order, which is before the court, um, in what the people are, uh, the parties are using and utilizing. And that's being, after a, a, a Extensive two-year investigation was done by uh, CPS and through the courts and made the recommendations and looking at the best needs and the needs of Jaden placed this order in place. There is no reason which to circumvent which was already done through the CPS court or through the juvenile court and in which to change the recommendations which they had, which was that any contact with Kaylee is to be supervised. Sir Nick. Oh yeah, thank you, Your Honor. But many of the allegations that that was the, the that was the the. the Mr. Zernage, I can't hear you. Mr. Zernage, I can't hear you. I see your mouth moving, and I can't hear you. I don't think he can hear me. Mr. Hoffman, can you hear me? Yes, Judge, I can. All right. For the record, I'm typing into um, the chat to Mr. Zernage that I can't hear him. I don't see that he's on um, mute. There you, a there you are. You're kind of cutting in and out, Mr. Zernich. Now I can hear you. I didn't hear everything that you said before. Uh, uh, my, Thank you. My, cli my client denies. Um, Oh, yes, yeah, she just told me that. My, my, my staff was telling me that I wasn't going through. Uh, thank you. I was interrupted. Um, the, my client denies the fact that she ever stole anything, uh, let alone in front of the child. Um, she's she's uh, been clean and sober for a number of years now. She lives on her own. Uh, she has a job. The very things that she should be doing, if there were guardianship, that it would be terminated. Um, she, think, she says that the visits with the child have been reasonably good, except for the fact that they're not long enough, and the child indicates to her that, that he's not supposed to give her a hug, uh, that it upsets uh, um uh, Ms. Ho, and, and we're, we're willing to do a drug test uh, to, to before having some expanded visitation. We know there may be some concerns of the court, um, and we're, we're going to have a little bit of a difficult time completing the 550 case plan because we don't know where it is. Uh, she's shown me some emails that she's been sending over the past month to CPS, and, and she gets responses, but she doesn't have a copy of what that plan is to actually complete. 
um, if we could if we could get uh, you know uh, uh, something in that regard, if she has to come to the court to pick it up to review it, um, th that would be very helpful. But in the interim time, we don't think it's too much to ask for more than one hour visit every every two weeks if the court believes that she's fit for that. And we'd like to know what to do to satisfy that. And I figure we could start with the drug test. We could start with showing some pictures uh, to Mr. Hoffman of, of her home where she lives. Um, and and we, don't, we don't know enough about the, uh, that he's talking of, uh, uh, about the treatment, uh, the occupational therapy that the child gets because nothing has ever been shared with her in that regard. Uh, I think that upsets her. But then again, um, Mr. Klinkscales has sole legal and sole physical custody. There was, it wasn't even a modified version of that to say, well, he makes the decisions, but he has to share information. They just, they just don't share anything with her. They tell her she has no right to it. Um, I, I, I don't know what condition Mr. Hoffman is talking about. You have no control of your legs, your hands. I can't really dispute whether it's true or not because I would, I would just be uh, guessing in that regard. But certainly would like to be able to see the, uh, those records, have some understanding uh, or my client would like some understanding of, her, of the problems that her child might be having. Thank you so much, Council. I'm basing my um, temporary decision um, on a few items. First, the existing order in the J case um, requires supervised visitation. At this point, I am not inclined to order anything above and beyond that. Mr. Hoffman, thank you um, for allowing me to understand the uh, special needs of this child. The court is very familiar um, with the sensory processing um, issues that you have described and the uh, appropriate treatment. Um, if he is getting straight A's at eight years old while dealing with this issue is extraordinary. Um, and so I would look to uh, Mr. Hoffman to see the evaluation and the occupational evaluation and any notes. Um, if he has an IEP, a copy of his IEP, along with um, any grades um, or other information counsel, you both know that um, his special needs and issues are important under the best interest findings. Uh, I, this is a real short turnaround, so I'll see you at the beginning of March and I'll give you that date in a moment. Um, the, uh, supervised visitation will remain the same. I understand that natural mother is not happy um, with one hour. However, this child has been out of her custody and care for some time. Um, it is only now upon objection to a guardianship is there a request um, for additional visitation. Under the guardianship statute, she has no entitlement um, to visitation unless she first shows that the guardian has somehow acted unreasonably. And I understand that she, the guardian has been acting under temporary six-month guardianship um, documents from dad. However, I can't make a determination now that um, the guardian has acted unreasonably. Given the order in the J case for supervised um, visitation, and um, I think this is actually rather generous. Um, so I, I also appreciate that there's only been 16 visits, um, as Mr. Hoffland um, articulated. So for those reasons, the status quo will remain. This is already what the parties are doing upon their own invention without me, um, and that will continue until March. Council, you keep asking for an order for a drug test. Hesitant to order her to take a drug test. Um, certainly she could if she wanted. Um, produce uh, the results of a drug test to me. Um, certainly, if she wanted to, she could produce pictures of her home um, to Mr. Hoffman and to me at the evidentiary hearing, show me that she has a home. Um, it sounds like from Mr. Hoffman's um, argument today that living conditions have been a significant issue in this case throughout, and that is important. Um, I will, counsel, for your edification, request the Clark County CPS records. Both the Clark County CPS records and any additional CPS records I receive will be introduced into evidence as the court's exhibits A and B, I anticipate. Um, I would be looking, I told you for those school records, Mr. Zarich, I can't tell you exactly what you have to show me um, or what evidence um, is important. I can tell you that any and all evidence and document about the child is always so important to me. 
But I leave that to you, counsel, and um, to your client to demonstrate um, that she is fit. I will tell you now, um, because you raised it, I'm not going to give her a copy of her case plan. Um, she can't come to my office and pick it up. Um, I understand that she may be having difficulty getting that case plan. However, if there is a J case that says dad gets so legal and so physical, her visitation has to be supervised and it's based in part because of her failure to uh, complete her case plan. If she shows up to that evidentiary hearing and that case plan isn't finished, it is extraordinarily unlikely um, that her objection um, is going to have a, a, a large amount of weight. That is what that case plan is what evens everything out. That's the beginning place. And if she didn't finish the stuff in that case plan until the months before the evidentiary hearing, it speaks volumes. Um, so, so I'm a bit concerned um, and I want to make sure everybody really understands um, the issues presented. It's extraordinarily complicated legal issue um, because of the, the standing of all the different parties um, and their rights or lack of rights and their biologic relationship. However, if another judge, especially a dependency judge, gave you the opportunity to complete, complete a case plan and you didn't, it gives me a sense of that person's priorities, um, and it, it, it just creates tremendous concern on my part. Um, it, the dependency court, those judges are much more lenient. Um, at counsel, I know, I, I don't have to tell Mr. Hoffman and Mr. Zernich this. You know that um, I am very, I'm a stickler for this kind of thing, um, and it's important to me. Uh, and I know that you both know this. This is not news to either of you. And so just because, um, and understand that it takes a lot for um, a dependency judge to make an argument, to make a decision like this, correct? Um, and a lot of years have gone by. So it concerns me tremendously because of the nature of, of the legal decisions I have to make and the facts. I have to set up for evidentiary hearing and I need additional information, um, Mr. Zernich, you have a, another opportunity to pr present more evidence, okay? So, um, Tanya, give me a uh, date in March, half day. March 8th at 9 o'clock. Thank you. Council, um, I'd like mm -hmm. your uh, pretrial memorandums and your uh, proposed exhibit list. And proposed exhibit is one week before by 5 p.m. Those should, pursuant to administrative order, be emailed to my law clerk, um, and we'll provide those to the courtroom clerk. Counsel, I'd ask you to meet and confer to um, determine whether or not there's any of those exhibits you can stipulate to admission. If you present to me, prior to the evidentiary hearing, a stipulation relative to the admission of any of those exhibits, I will have read them and digested them in total before the evidentiary hearing. That will save us a tremendous amount of time. Mr. Hoffman, I told you what I'm looking for, especially um, in reference to those special needs. I want to make sure that I have all the information about the child, but I leave it to both of you to present whatever else you think um, might be appropriate. Counsel, anything else from today? No, the temporary order. order um, should, how do we present that down to the court, Your Honor? Mr. Hoffman, you'll just draft the temporary order um, and send it over to um, my inbox, and I'll sign off on it. Thank you, Judge. It'll, it's set to expire the day of the evidentiary. Okay. And I'll send it over to Mr. Zernich for his review. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, thank counsel. You. Have a good thank day. You, All right. Thank you.